I painted my floor tiles two and a half years ago, but did they last? Today, I'm gonna show you. Hey everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. One of my most popular videos here on the channel is my DIY painted and stenciled floor tile video. You guys loved that video and the idea of taking existing floor tiles, giving them a coat of paint and making them look new and fresh. I've received so many questions on that video and the number one question I get asked is, did these floor tiles last? I'm going to give you that update today, show you exactly how they look today, two and a half years after I did the DIY, plus I'm going to answer all of your FAQs on that video, like how I clean them. Let's get started. So the first question is, can you even paint floor tile? Is this a legitimate thing that you can do? My answer is yes, absolutely, I did it, and I've seen a ton of other people do it too. It is a legitimate thing that you can do to your floor tile to give it an update when you don't wanna completely rip out your tile and replace it. In my experience and opinion, you can pretty much paint almost anything you want, but what it boils down to is the correct preparation, the right product, plus how you seal everything up at the end to protect your work. As mentioned, I did a full video on this floor painting tutorial step by step, so make sure to hit up here or in the description box below to see that whole tutorial, but I wanna quickly go over how I painted my floor tile. Step number one was I sanded everything. Now my floor tiles are ceramic. This is in my work studio, not my home. It's a little square in the corner where I have a wood stove. Just to be clear, I do not use this wood stove and I, did, I failed to mention that verbally in my video. I did mention it in the description, but I should have mentioned it in the video. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the end. What the sanding does is it roughs up the surface of the tile so that paint is more likely to stick to the tile. I used a power sander and 120 grit sandpaper, but you could also sand by hand. The second step I did was I taped off any trim and baseboards that were around my area. Now you could completely remove baseboards and trim if you want. I could have done that here, but I decided to just tape everything as best I could. Step number three was I took some chalk paint this is rust-oleum chalked paint in a charcoal color which is very close to black and I took a smaller detail brush to go over all of the grout lines and the edges of my tiled area I get asked a lot if you can use different types of paint you sure can you could also choose to use a really sticky primer and then another type of paint and then a different type of sealant that I did I'm just showing you what I did and how it worked out in the end. Next, I used a foam roller to apply the rest of the paint to the rest of the tiled area. You probably know that I love foam rollers for that smooth finish. I've used it on cupboards, I've used it on accessories, and I used it on this floor here. I just like the finish that it provides and you won't see any brush strokes. So you could go on to the ceiling part after this step. But for my little studio area here, I wanted to add some patterns, so I took these stencils. They're from Cutting Edge Stencils. I'll link them in the description box below. And use some white chalked paint to put a pattern on the tiles. The really important part here is you have to use a thin coat of paint when you're doing stencils, otherwise it's going to bleed through the stencil. So it's better to have a few thin coats of paint rather than one thick coat of paint. A lot of you on the original video did not like the stencil I used or would have preferred something different, and of course you can do something different. This is just what I did for my own room. Next you can use a really small craft brush. I just use my kids craft brush to touch up any areas of the stencil that you may have made mistakes on or missed. Use either color and just touch up all of the little details. So many of you were wondering why I didn't move the wood stove here in my studio and the reason was it, I knew that I could touch up the stencil areas around the legs plus it is several hundred pounds and it is attached to the ceiling so I didn't really feel like it was worth the extra effort to move it in and out of my particular space however you might want to do something different in your space. Once everything is completely dry here is one of the most important parts in my opinion is to take a top coat product like a Verithane polyurethane and go over all of your work in at least two coats, even three or four. And what this does is it's a clear top coat and it protects all of that paintwork underneath. You wanna make sure every coat is completely dry before you put on the next coat. I just used a foam brush to apply this one as well. You certainly can use different types of top coats. This is just the one that I really like to use for a variety of different projects and I've had some really good results with it. 
Again, check out that link in the description box below for this full step-by-step -step tutorial. I think it's really important to seal tiles if you plan to paint them because again, like I said, it provides that top layer so that the paint underneath is less likely to chip or flake away or wear. Now, how do you clean painted floor tiles? I simply use exactly the same products and method that I use on the rest of the flooring in my home, which is a mixture of laminate flooring and regular tile flooring. I use a mop and just an all-purpose cleaner. I like mixing a little bit of pine salt with water or I've used the Mrs. Meyers all-purpose cleaners as well. And I just go ahead and sweep the floor as per usual as I would any other flooring in my home. And then I just go ahead and mop it. Again, what I think helps is that protective top coat so you're not accidentally scratching away at anything in that flooring. If you happen to have any stuck on residue on your tile, I would just be careful not to use any sort of metallic or really hard scraping tool to get that off. Maybe stick to something a little more pliable, softer, like a little plastic spatula or something like that. So here's the big question. How durable are DIY painted tiles? Do they last? Did mine last? Here's the answer. After two years and five months, so really close to two and a half years, I think my painted floor tiles look great. I'm gonna give you some close-up shots of the tiles and you can see that overall everything looks really good, the pattern still looks nice and crisp, and there are very minimal marks and scratches. Here's some spots where I accidentally basically like scraped over a metallic object over the tiles and you can see where there's tiny little scratch marks. If I wanted to, I could take a paintbrush and just touch those up and apply some more varathane. I haven't done that yet, but that's certainly an option. You can also see this section where we have this little leak in the studio ceiling that has caused this damage to the fireplace and it's been leaking onto the floor and it has kind of like a little bit of a rust patch there. And also you can see some discoloration right here where water has been sitting on the floor and it's created that discoloration. I'm not too sure if it's in the top layer or the paint, but those spots are quite minimal and you can't really see them unless you're peeking really close to the floor. In my opinion, I think most painted floors, if they are prepped properly and sealed properly, should last you at least a couple of years. If I was to do this in a larger, more trafficked area, I personally would probably reseal it once a year or two, just to make sure that you're continually protecting that painted surface. Next question I get asked a ton, can you do this in a high traffic area? As you can see, this area here in my studio isn't high traffic. It's just in the corner of where I work, so I'm not in this building that often, mostly just to do my DIY videos and to do some building projects and things. Plus, it's in the corner underneath a stove that I don't even use, so I hardly walk on it. I have tipped over like candles and supplies and things and smashed things into it, so it has had a little bit of wear and tear, but not as much as what you would see in a kitchen or a bathroom. I would recommend doing this in a lesser trafficked area because I think that would be a good place to test this out, especially if you're newer at doing DIYs and painting. And then if you're satisfied with the results after a while, then maybe go on to a larger area and somewhere where more people are walking. My blogging friend, Dale, she has a blog called Blooming DIYer. I'm gonna link her blog post down in the description box below. She painted the slate tiles in her bathroom. And the last update I saw was around a year after she painted them, she put Varathane in three coats on top of her tiles and they still look great in a bathroom with all that moisture and traffic. So check that post out. I know my friend Misha from Remington Avenue did that in her bathroom too. So I'll link those ladies posts in the description box below and you can see what they have to say about the higher traffic areas. The final frequently asked question I get about my painted floors is do I use this wood stove? And like I mentioned before, no, I don't. I painted underneath it. I don't use the stove. Do I plan to use it in the future? I'm not too sure. This work studio is on our property. We bought our property 13 years ago and to us it's our forever home. 
We don't plan on selling it anytime soon. I know plans can change and life can throw you curveballs. We don't plan on selling it anytime soon. However, if we did sell it, maybe we would have to remove the stove completely. Maybe we would have to, you know, replace the tile completely to make sure it's up to code. So if you are doing this around a wood stove or a fireplace that you are using, I would just make sure to connect with a professional, so a professional general contractor, somebody that would know the code you need to make everything fire safe. That is really important. I didn't need to worry about fire safety here because I don't use this stove, but if you are doing this around some source of heat, make sure to check and make sure everything is safe. So here's a final look at what our flooring looked like two and a half years ago and what it looks like now. I hope this video helped answer the questions that you have about DIY painted flooring. If you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. I love to chat with you about DIY and decor ideas. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. I'm going to leave some more videos that I hope you will love and watch next right up here.